This isn't a Samsung Galaxy Fold review. Now, if it was a Samsung Galaxy Fold review, these are probably the things I'd talk about. Number one, the unfolded screen is amazing. It's great being able to have a small phone in your pocket, unfold it, and watch media, although the aspect ratio is kind of weird and not optimal for things like YouTube. Number two, the smaller screen is just too small. I tried to get used to it over the course of four days or so, and it was okay, but honestly, I much, much would have preferred it if Samsung was able to fill that entire front display. Number three, battery life was actually pretty good, which was surprising to me because I used it unfolded pretty much all the time. The device basically begs for you to use it unfolded, and even with that giant display, I got pretty decent battery life. Number four, the cameras are basically the same as the Galaxy Note 10, which is to say pretty good, but not amazing. And number five, of course, performance is great. It's got 12 gigs of RAM, it's got an 855. There's not a lot that's gonna slow this phone down, even though you're using it in a much bigger display. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, I honestly wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about why the Galaxy Fold is so important for the industry, even if not a lot of people are gonna buy it. And look, it's completely understandable that not a lot of people would want to buy this phone. It didn't exactly inspire confidence that the phone was breaking the first time that it was released. And a lot of people heard about this, even if they aren't really in the tech industry. It's also $2,000, so there's not a lot of people that are willing to just throw their money at a first generation product, especially when stuff like that happens. But honestly, the Galaxy Fold is a lot more important than the sum of its parts. Back at MWC in February, the Huawei Mate X was announced. Everyone knew that the Fold was coming. The Motorola Razr is coming somewhere down the line. And TCL was also announcing a bunch of foldable concepts. It just seemed like the world was completely about to shift. It was probably one of the most exciting MWCs that we've been to in a long time because it felt like 2019 was going to be the year of foldable phones. And well, Galaxy Fold review units started breaking. The Mate X got shifted back because of the whole trade war deal and everyone else kind of fell by the wayside. I don't think other manufacturers really cared about releasing their foldables early when Samsung and Huawei, two of the biggest smartphone manufacturers in the world, had to delay their own. And so now here we are in November, and we currently have about one foldable phone, maybe two or three if you count the Royal Flex Pi or any of those other devices. But it's really important that Samsung did release this thing, even if there are all the problems. Look, innovation is almost completely driven by competition. And without Samsung or Huawei in the picture, nobody else is going to rush out and try to make their foldable device a reality. Now that Samsung got back in the game, they put pressure on Huawei to finally get their Mate X out, which is apparently launching this month. There are new leaks of Moto's Razer phone. And honestly, we're probably about to see 2020 be the actual year of the foldable phone. And yeah, the Fold is definitely not perfect. It's using a plastic OLED display, just like pretty much every other foldable right now. And that means that it's going to be really easy to scratch you could probably break it if you drop something sharp on it. It's definitely a first generation product, but we need somebody to push the industry forward. And if anyone has experience in coming back from huge explosions, it's Samsung. So now finally the Huawei Mate X is on the horizon. We've got other foldables that are coming out soon. And I'm just really excited to see where all of this goes. Now, apparently there is a super thin glass technology that might start making it into the second generation of foldable devices, but we're already seeing Gen 2 devices start being theorized by companies like Samsung. At Samsung Developer Conference last week, they released this new foldable concept that flips shut. And it's just really interesting to see all these different form factors that are starting to come out. Even TCL made this really weird, awesome accordion foldable phone that basically turns into a giant tablet. And that's kind of the form factor that I'd like to see because you can have a smartphone and you could technically use it as a laptop if you had enough components and wireless peripherals. But until we get a giant display that is about 16 by nine or something similar, I'm gonna keep away from using it as a laptop. But anyways, I really kind of just wanted to use this video to start a discussion about foldable phones. And if you haven't used a Samsung Galaxy Fold or any other foldable phone before, I really encourage you to go to an AT&T store and just play with it because these things are truly pretty amazing. But what do you guys think about these foldable phones? I'm gonna stay in the comment section for a pretty long time to talk about this. So drop your thoughts below and let's have a discussion. But until next time, I'm David with Android Authority and I'll catch you in the next video.